In this lecture, we are going to talk about Curl, Stokes theorem, and Laplacian. So let us first know what is a curl. So for any given vector, which is basically rotating in nature, the curl of that vector represents the rotation of that vector around a particular point. So in uh, standard definition, you can say that curl of A represents the circulation of A at any point whose magnitude and direction denote the magnitude and axis of the maximum circulation around that point. So you, as I already told you that in terms of 3D, you can represent a point as a, as a closed surface whose volume is decreasing towards zero. In case of an open surface, you can represent a point whose surface area is decreasing towards zero. So mathematically curl can be represented using this formula and it is denoted by del cross A. And uh, you, in, in the integral terms, it is uh, equivalent to this formula. So it is basically the line, closed line integral of uh, that circulating vector A uh, with respect to area and that area must be shrinking towards zero so that it becomes a point. So it is denoted using this figure also. So this is a closed, uh, closed contour L and uh, this surface area S is bounded by it. And uh, the curl of any vector A uh, on this particular point or this particular closed area will represent the circulation of that particular vector A around this closed path L with a condition that this surface area delta S is uh, decreasing towards zero, right? And the direction of the circulation or the direction of curl will be represented by the normal to this surface, particular surface, right? So this is the definition of curl. Now, the, the standard formula for uh, curl is like this. For Cartesian coordinates, uh, you will have to take the determinant and uh, you know how to calculate determinant. You take one element and then you uh, take the multiplication of this minus this. And uh, this is what it is written in the expanded form here. Similar to the previous, uh, similar to the calculation of divergence and uh, uh, which one was that uh, before divergence? Gradient. So similar to gradient and divergence, we will calculate the curl also in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. And formula for this is given here. So you have to remember these uh, formulas. And if you want to go for the definition, you can always refer to the uh, electromagnetic field theory book by Sadiku, right? So now let's move forward. These are the few properties of curl that you should remember. Uh, obviously curl, of, uh, curl is taken for a vector and its outcome is also a vector. And uh, that is why the curl of a uh, scalar field will make no sense. This is the expansion rule that is applicable for curl. And uh, you have to remember these formulas, which may be used in electromagnetic field theory uh, and uh, even in antenna theory also, but a little less. Uh, divergence, uh, you have to uh, consider these six and seven points more uh, closely because it says that the divergence of curl of a vector field is zero, it vanishes. What does it mean? A uh, curl of any vector field represents its rotation, right? Curl of any vector field represents it, uh, its rotation. So it is like if you are uh, talking about a point, it, it means that any vector field is coming towards it and then all uh, going outside also. So if you take a particular area, which is a closed area, and if you take a particular vector, which is rotating in nature, which means it is coming inside this area and going out also, then definitely what will be the divergence of its value? The divergence is going to be zero. So I already discussed in the previous lecture that at any point, if the total incoming field lines is equal to total outgoing field lines, then, then the divergence is going to be zero. So divergence means the field line should be going outside or completely inside. So this is not the case with curl, which is circulating in nature. So whatever will come will also go out. So that's why uh, if we take divergence of curl of any vector field, it has to be zero, right? I hope you understand. Now coming to the seventh point, uh, the curl of the gradient of a scalar field is also zero. So why is that? 
uh, I already told you by the definition of gradient, uh, what does it mean? It means that the gradient shows the maximum change of direction of any scalar field V. So it means that it will be directed towards one direction. It is not circulating in nature. It is directed towards one direction. So what does it mean? If you take a non-circulating vector, if you take the curl of a non-circulating vector, it is always going to be zero. So for curl of any vector to be non-zero, that vector should be rotational in nature, right? So that, the, that is what it is uh, evident from these two images in A and B. In the first image, you can see that around that point P, this particular vector, let me call it as A, is rotating. So that's why uh, the curl of this vector A around this point P will not be zero. It will be a non-zero quantity. And the direction of the curl will be upward using thumb rule. So it is rotating like this. So if it is rotating like this, uh, the thumb will uh, point towards out of the screen, right? So in the A, for the, for the figure of A, the direction of curl of this vector A is going to be outside the screen. Now here, as you can see, this vector A is non-rotational in nature. It is always directed in one direction. It is not rotational. So obviously the curl of this vector A around P is going to be zero. Now the Stokes theorem is related to the curl of any vector A. And it says that the circulation of any vector A around a closed path L is equal to the surface integral of the curl of A over that same open surface S, which is bounded by the same closed path L. What does it mean? Uh, circulation of a vector field A around a closed path L. It is nothing but the line integral of A around that closed path L, right? So this is your closed path L and you have, uh, and there is a vector A. So you have to, if you take the line integral of this particular vector A around this uh, closed path L, According to Stokes theorem, this line integral, closed line integral will be equal to the surface integral of curl of that same vector A uh, around, uh, around, that, around the surface. That surface is bound by that closed path L, right? So this is what is your Stokes theorem. This theorem is very important in converting uh, closed line integrals to surface integral and vice versa. Now let us quickly do an example on curl. So there is a vector field given name as Q. Uh, let me call it as A. This is your A vector. And uh, you have to find the curl of this vector. So this quantity will be nothing. Uh, and since you can see that it is rho, phi, and z, so this is cylindrical coordinates. So this is nothing but A rho. This is nothing but A phi. And this is your A z, right? So using that uh, formula from, for the cylindrical coordinates for curl, if you put all these values here and expand here, you will get this answer. So I want you to solve it yourself and check uh, uh, yourself whether you are getting this answer or not. Now, coming to the Laplacian of a scalar. So what is a Laplacian? So, uh, According to the definition, Laplacian of a scalar field V is written as del square V, which is the divergence of gradient of V. So what do you mean by divergence of gradient of V? So V is a scalar and if you take its gradient, it will represent a vector, right? And, and its vector will have a magnitude and direction in the direction where the change in this particular V uh, uh, scalar field is maximum, right? So if you take divergence of this particular vector, then what you get is called Laplacian. So this is called del square V. So it is represented like this. If uh, you expand, since V is a scalar field, uh, you can also write it in this way, del dot del V, right? So what is del dot del? Del dot del V is nothing but you can expand it and write it in this form. So this is nothing but your del operator and this is your del V, right, gradient. So if you take the dot product, uh, only the ax dot ax component and ay dot ay and aj dot aj component will remain and you will finally get an expanded formula of Laplacian in Cartesian coordinates since we are discussing about the Cartesian coordinates. So this is the formula of Laplacian 
for Cartesian coordinate. Now uh, we can uh, use the formulas for uh, uh, cylindrical and spherical coordinates also, which is written here on the screen. And uh, you have to remember this because uh, um, there is no other way. So you remember this and direct questions come in exams like IES and GATE uh, on Laplacian using these formulas, right? And you can always go to book for derivation if you want. Now, since uh, this Laplacian was dependent on change in V, right? Why? Because gradient of any scalar field V represents the change, right? Uh, in, in, if the scalar field V is changing in a particular direction maximum, then it will be represented by the gradient. So what happens if this change is harmonic, like uh, it is kind of a sine wave. Suppose if your vector field, uh, sorry, scalar field V is a sine wave, which means that it is changing in a particular direction, then again coming back, then changing, then coming back. So it is like in a harmonic motion. So what will happen then? In that case, uh, if you uh, take the gradient, uh, it will be of circulating in nature, right? It will, it will, it will be like uh, uh, going in a particular direction, then again coming back, going in a particular direction, and then coming, uh, coming back. So, for a circulating vector, if you take divergence, it is going to be zero, as we already discussed. For divergence to be non-zero your vector field should either be diverging or converging, right? But if it is circulating in nature, which means if something is going and then again coming back, then its divergence is going to be zero. So for a harmonically varying scalar field V, your uh, gradient uh, will not be in a particular direction. It will be like, again, coming back, like it will be a circulatory nature. And for that, if you take divergence, the output is going to be zero. So that is what it is written here. A scalar field V is said to be harmonic in a given region if Laplacian becomes zero. This equation is very important and it is called del square V is equal to zero is a Laplace equation. And uh, it is very useful in electrostatics that we will be studying in our next part. So it is used to calculate potential and uh, electric field and so on. So this is very important equation, Laplace equation. And there is one more similar equation that is called Poisson's equation. So both are dependent on Laplacians and we will study in the next part. Now uh, we have discussed about the Laplacian of a scalar, but since this del square quantity is a scalar in itself, can't we take uh, del square of a vector? Uh, it turns out this, that yes, we can take, uh, take a del square of a vector, which is called a Laplacian of a vector A and it is defined as the gradient of divergence of A minus curl of curl of A. So this is the formula. Although this formula is not used very much, but you should remember it, that Laplacian of a vector A is given as the gradient of divergence of A minus curl of a curl of A. Uh, let us quickly see one example uh, on Laplacian. Uh, there is a scalar field given U since Laplacian, uh, we are uh, interested about Laplacian of a scalar, this is scalar field is given and using seeing this uh, terms rho, z and phi, we can say that this is cylindrical coordinate. Now we have to find the Laplacian of this particular field. So we will directly apply the Laplacian formula for cylindrical coordinate, which is this one. So this is already written here. And all you have to do is you have to put the value of u inside the formula, right? Here, here, and here. So once calculating, you will find that Laplacian becomes zero. So uh, I want you to uh, go and solve this yourself so that you become confident. Now let us discuss more about some of the types of different fields and uh, what, uh, what effect will it have on the divergence and curl of these vectors. So these are all vector fields, A, these are all vector fields. And can you say at a point P, if the vector field is like this, what is divergence is going to be? It is definitely going to be zero for this A image because whatever lines are coming, they are going outside also. So not, it is not like completely either going or either coming, it is coming and going. 
so the divergence will be zero. So that's why del dot a is equal to zero for first. And also since these a lines are not rotational around p, then the curl is also going to be zero. So curl represents the rotation of any vector around a point p. So since this is not rotational, curl is also going to be zero. So without seeing the above part, can you tell me what is divergence going to be for this image? It is going to be non-zero and positive because from P, you can see that A is going out. And can you tell me the curl value? Does it look rotational? No, it is not rotational. So curl is going to be zero. So that is what is written, it is written here. Uh, divergence is not equal to zero and curl is equal to zero. And also del dot A will be a positive quantity, right? Because it is going out, it is diverging out. Now tell me about the C image. You see that it is rotating. This A is rotating. So for any rotational vector, uh, divergence is always going to be zero because whatever comes in goes out. So divergence will be zero and uh, curl will be non-zero because obviously it is rotating, right? And its direction will be, it is, it is rotating in this direction. So now the direction of curl will be inside the screen. From your screen, it will be inside. So using the right thumb rule. Uh, now looking at the last image, you see that it is going out also and it is rotating also. So in this case, both the divergence and curl will be non-zero, right? 